Hi there, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of Regen Suppliers. Today I'm talking about Rebella WJ, which is a top-notch FDA 361 HCTP compliant umbilical cord allograft. For those of you out there who are looking for the best 361 compliant product on the market, well, you've come to the right presentation. All right, so I'm going to talk about what is an HCTP clarify the FDA's 351 versus 361 categories. We'll discuss minimal manipulation and homologous use, and then uh, I'll explain Rebella WJ. So this presentation is not being given by an attorney. I am not an attorney. <laughs> just wanted to clarify that. All right, what is an HCTP? So first I want to clarify that I didn't make these this stuff up. Most of this is copy and paste from the FDA's regulatory handbook. Um, so unlike a lot of people in the industry who manipulate what the FDA writes, most of what I write is just copy and, and paste here. So HCTP stands for human cells, tissue, and cellular and tissue-based products. The FDA created the regulations to distinguish what needs a full FDA approval versus simply being regulated by the agency. Uh, the FDA is pretty clear, uh, but there are still players in the industries who just love to disseminate false information. I see it every day. I see it by representatives of companies, um, but I've read the handbook many times. So they published this handbook in July of 2020. Um, it's called Regulatory Considerations for, you can read the HCTPs, Minimal Manipulation and Homologous Use, Guidance for Industry and Their Own Staff. So it's basically distinguishing between 351 versus 361. The FDA ge generally regulates regenerative medicine technologies through what they call the Public Health Service Act, and underneath that is 351 and 361. 351 products are regulated as drugs and or biologics. Um, they're really not different as far as the uh, approval process. I'll mention that. 361 products, comparatively, are largely unregulated as HCTPs. They're not completely unregulated. They're just much less regulated than drugs. And here's a table to show that. So 351s are regulated as biologic product class, 361s HCTP. You do need FDA approval for specific claims and marketing as um, for a 351. For a 361, you just don't make clinical claims. The potency and bioactivity and purity are assured with a 351. For a 361, they're really not tested. They should be tested, but you don't have to. Um, and then the barrier to entry is obviously high for a 351, um, and you do get marketing exclusivity. What I do want to dispel is the notion that 361 products are being, being made by, you know, mad scientists in their home garage. Um, I just pulled this picture from the internet. But the labs that, for instance, where Rebella WJ is made, you know, kind of look like this with a clean room with very uh, tight uh, constraints on the particulate matter. Uh, they have lemon or flow hoods, biological safety cabinets, and the products are uh, have very tight quality control. So when you look at the 351, um, these are blood-derived cell or tissue-based products that fall under the category of 351 because they are either more than minimally manipulated or they're used for non-homologous work. I'm going to define each of these terms, but those really minimal manipulation and homologous use are the two terms to keep in mind. If it is a 351, um, you can call it a drug or a biologic, it's going to need an approval, which can take 3 to 12 years. The median cost is $19 million. Um, could be as low as $6 million, but it could be as high as $77 um, million on average. You know, it's, it's just let's take, shorten it and say that it's very expensive and time consuming. About 20% of drugs and biologics make it through the process. And why not? Because either it costs too much and they run out of money, it might not show effectiveness for this specific indication it's being tested, or it might have safety issues. Now here is the exact description of a 361, um, i.e. an HCTP, 
um, in the FDA's handbook. The HCTP is minimally manipulated. Uh, it's intended for homologous use. Um, it's not being combined with another article except for water, crystalloids, or a sterilizing, preserving, or storage agent. Um, it does not have a systemic effect, and it's not depend, dependent upon the metabolic activity of living cells for its primary function. Um, so let me just point out this key sentence. The HCP does not have a systemic effect and is not dependent upon the metabolic activity of living cells for its primary function. Now, with minimal manipulation, it basically means that the processing does not alter the original relevant characteristics of the tissue related to its utility for reconstruction, repair, or replacement. Um, or if it's a cellular or non-structural tissue processing that doesn't alter the relevant biological characteristics. So what's an example of a structural tissue? Bone, skin, amniotic membrane, umbilical cord, blood vessel, adipose tissue, articular cartilage, tendon, ligament. All right, so keep that in mind. Umbilical cord is right off of the FDA's regulatory book. So a couple of very important points of clarity. Can a product that is minimal manipulation or a 361 uh, HCTP have live cells? Yes. Yes. A lot of competitors say, oh, if it has live cells, it's automatically a 351 or, you know, a biologic or a drug and needs approval. That is not an automatic um, shift. The live cells are allowed as long as it's not the cells performing the primary function of the tissue. Competitors will say all cellular products are 351, but that's just because, you know, either they haven't read the guidelines, they don't understand them, or they want to twist the facts, right? Because it clearly says that it can't be the cells having either a systemic effect or um, be the primary reason um, with the metabolic, you know, function, okay? It can be a local metabolic function. It doesn't have to be systemic, right? Now, it, as long as it's a secondary metabolic activity that the tissue, the cells are having, that's okay per the regulatory handbook. An example would be metabolically stimulating a joint to promote new cartilage formation. That's local. It's not systemic. Um, and if the primary function is, is structural, then that's okay as a secondary. So let's look at umbilical cord tissue. The umbilical cord, um, which is mentioned in the regulatory handbook, provides structural support, cushioning, lubrication, and protection. And that's an example. Rubella WJ is an example of a minimal manipulation product. There's no culturing. There's no enzymes. You know, nothing is being uh, done to the product that would shift it. Um, the blood vessels are being removed, um, but that doesn't change the, the categorization either. Now, if it's a 351, then something in the processing alters the characteristics. Um, it may be culturing. It may be a particular way of grinding or putting some enzymes in it that changes the way that the processing is categorized for the tissue. Now, people say, oh, if you cryogenically freeze the product, that makes it a 351. That's not true either. It's very clear in the, in the regulations handbook that you are allowed to put a preserving agent um, with like a DMSO um, and not change the categorization. So here's an example. A manufacturer removes blood vessels from the umbilical cord and the rest of the umbilical cord is processed according to CGMP and an ISO hood. While there is some grinding and cutting, the processing in no way alters the original relevant characteristics of the HCTP as a cushioning agent. So this is minimal manipulation, and I use this example, which is Rebella WJ. So homologous versus non-homologous, that's the second thing to consider when is it either an HCTP versus, you know, a 351. Homologous use means the repair, reconstruction, replacement, or supplementation that performs the same basic function from the recipient as it does in the donor. It doesn't have to be in the same anatomical area, right? It could be under the face for structural support of the tissue, could be in the knee. Um, so that doesn't necessarily uh, shift the category. Um, it could be recipient cells or tissues that are identical, skin to skin as an example, or perform um, the same function. 
Um, recipient cells are tissues that may not be identical to the donor cells or tissues that perform one or more of the same basic functions. So here's an example. Re umbilical cord matrix allograft is used in a joint to provide cushioning and support. This is homologous use. It's the same function, same, same, from the recipient to the donor. That, once again, is the example of Rebella WJ. So let's look at Rebella WJ. It's a cryopreserved Wharton's jelly cord tissue allograft. It's minimal manipulated, derived from full-term post-C-section umbilical cord tissue. There's no harm to baby or mother. There's very tight quality control, um, looking for communicable diseases um, and microbiology. It is intended for homologous use, for structural support, providing cushioning, protection, and lubrication. So what types of issues can receive injections? Well, for an example, it could be a joint or a soft tissue that will benefit from the structural support. Um, could be nerves, vessels, follicles that it's supporting, okay? With a 361 product, providers are the ones who decide which patients are well-suited according to the practice of medicine. That's not what FDA regulates. They regulate the products themselves, but not the practice of medicine. Providers can discuss the effect of homologous use, structural support, protection, cushioning, as well as the secondary local metabolic function that live cells can offer. All right, so there you go, a uh, succinct overview of a 351 versus 361, and an example, which is um, our product, Rebella WJ. We're the exclusive distributors of that product, which is umbilical cord allograft tissue, 361 HCTP compliant. Um, if you'd like to find out more, visit us at regensuppliers.com and call us for more information and ordering 888-888. Um, 568-6909. Um, new customers can get a two-for-one uh, special on their first order. So give us a call today um, while supplies last. Thank you.